Clyde the Glide Drexler, one of the great perimeter players of the late 80s and early 90s. This guy has been one of the most requested videos from my viewers, and the main reason is because the older generation, who actually witnessed him play, seemed to think he was a greater player than the people who have simply heard of him. So in this case, how good was Clyde Drexler really is a very legitimate question. Today we'll be evaluating his career, talent, and legacy starting from the beginning of his NBA days. Clyde Drexler was selected with a 14th overall pick in the 1983 draft by the Portland Trailblazers. His talent was recognized, but few saw his actual superstar potential, and that in large part is why he wasn't a top 10 pick. Clyde was a lengthy 6'7 shooting guard with incredible athleticism and leaping ability who had a tendency for attacking and finishing around the rim. As his career progressed, he also became a solid three-point shooter. With that being said, his career got off to a slow start. In his rookie campaign, he was coming off the bench playing only 17 minutes a game, averaging 7.7 .7 points, 2.9 rebounds, and 1.9 assists on 45.1% shooting. The Blazers finished off that year with a 48-34 record before they were eliminated in the first round in five games to the Phoenix Suns. Drexler hadn't given the Portland organization much reason yet to be committed to him, which brings us to the 1984 NBA draft. The Blazers were desperate for a legitimate center, which at the time was seen as something that's very necessary for a team to have in order to compete for championships. The Blazers, being not yet overly impressed by Drexler, offered the second overall pick and Drexler to the Houston Rockets for their superstar big man, Ralph Sampson. The Rockets already had the first overall pick, meaning that if this trade went through, they would have had the first pick, the second pick, and Clyde Drexler, and in all likelihood, they would have taken Hakeem Olajuwon first and Michael Jordan second, forming what would have been the greatest big three of all time. The Rockets thought about it and ultimately decided not to accept the trade, which they'll regret for the rest of eternity. The reason I mention this is because it's a key aspect to Drexler's legacy. If the trade had gone through, he certainly would have won more in the long run, but he also would have been relegated to a third option, and we probably wouldn't look back on him as an alpha superstar. The Blazers instead passed up on Jordan and took Sam Bowie second overall as the center they hoped would dominate moving forward. Sadly, he would have numerous injuries, turned out to be a bust, and was not at all the help that Drexler would need moving forward. Despite the missed opportunities, Drexler improved his game and stats across the board, and his team would advance further as a result. In that sophomore year, he averaged 17.2 points, 6 rebounds, 5.5 assists, and 2.2 steals on 49.4% shooting. His Blazers made it to the second round before being eliminated in five games by the eventual champion Los Angeles Lakers. He would continue to slowly improve over time, but it wasn't until his fifth year in the league that he reached his full potential as an elite star as he averaged 27 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 5.8 assists on 50.6% shooting. These fantastic numbers may represent Drexler's best season, but it was only good enough to make him the second best shooting guard in the league. And honestly, that's the issue that made him so underappreciated, was his timing. It's hard to give Drexler much attention for putting up 27, 6, and 6 when Jordan is simultaneously putting up 35, 8, and 8 from the same position while being the MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year. Clyde Drexler isn't appreciated enough by fans today, but the sad truth is, he wasn't even fully appreciated when he was in his prime. From 1988 to 1992, Clyde continued his steady production in his best five-year stretch of his career from a statistical standpoint, putting up 24.8 points, 6.9 rebounds, 6 assists, 2.2 steals on 49% shooting. His Blazers also made the NBA Finals twice in that five-year run. The first time came in the 1990 season, where they eventually lost in five games to the repeat champion Detroit Pistons, but it certainly wasn't Drexler's fault that they couldn't get it done because he was a monster in that series, scoring 26.4 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 6.2 assists on 54.3% shooting. The second time came in 1992, when they pushed Jordan's Bulls to six games. Unfortunately, this would be the last time that Clyde's Blazers would seriously contend for a title, and after his team would continue to decline for a few more years, Drexler had had enough and had asked for a trade midway through the 1994-95 season. His request was granted, and he was traded to the defending champion, yet struggling, Houston Rockets. The Rockets were entering those playoffs as an underdog six-seeded team. 
Hakeem Olajuwon was clearly the best player throughout the playoffs, but that season, he couldn't have done it without Drexler, who was huge throughout the playoffs, particularly in the first round against the Jazz, where he averaged 25-7-5 on 58% shooting, and in the finals against the Magic, where he averaged nearly 22-10-7 on 45% shooting. Those next few seasons with Houston would be his last, but by the end of his career, he was a former MVP candidate, an NBA champion, a 10-time All-Star, an Olympic gold medalist with the 92 Dream Team, and he was selected in 1996 as one of the 50 greatest players of all time. Very rarely do you hear people praise Clyde for his defense, but he was certainly more than capable, and with his quick hands and instincts, he was often among the league leaders in steals per game. Simply put, he was a winner, a big game performer, and one of the greatest and most underappreciated shooting guards who's ever played the game. Let me know in the comments section where you rank Clyde the Glide Drexler among the greatest shooting guards of all time. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.